Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to a, uh, you know, this is a quick view, and there's a thumbnail, and I realize you've already seen it. Uh, this is a quick view that was not intended or anticipated. This, this just ended up happening because uh, I had thought long and hard. Uh, let's talk about the tire that th this quick view is not about. Let's let's talk about the USD stickies. Uh, this is a monster of a tire. Like, I mean, th this is a monster of a tire and they are so heavy and they are really designed for like bouncing. And the rig that I have these fitted to or were fitted to is not a bouncer. It has been converted into a pure crawler. So I opted to go for these in, in, in their place, the 2.2 Tusk, which are again, massive and if if we need something for scale to give you an idea uh well there's a there's a 1.9 tusk there they're huge they're every bit as oversizedly big moving from the 1.9 to the 2.2 as it is in the rupture going from the 1.9 to the 2.2 these stand 150 millimeters tall and they are almost 60 millimeters wide 59 millimeters wide on the stock foam and uh, before we get these mounted up, we're gonna we're definitely gonna talk about that stock foam. Here he is. This foam is unreal, absolutely unreal. This is an RC four wheel drive level of foam. You could easily support of the full weight of a vehicle on this. Like, look at the handshake. It. And that's pushing it the easy way. If you go to push it this way, literally, if I put weight on that, I can feel almost no compression whatsoever. So the only thing we can hope for is that they know what they were, they were knew what they were doing, because it's not as if I have anything like this on hand to replace it with. For point of comparison, this is the foam that comes out of a USD sticky, which height wise, yeah, but look at the width. It's 33% wider and has a very tiny hole. Like it fits really snug on the beadlock ring. And I am running them on these, these guys, you know, with the, the center and it goes through the six little prongers, right? These are kind of custom jobs, but just to alleviate my own sense of what if I'm not covering all the bases, I disassembled a regular uh, 35 millimeter wide ring 2.2. I took apart one of Miss Direction's wheels. She is fitted with 2.2 uh, Hot Bodies Rovers, and the foam in a rover is like a marshmallow. Uh, these foams are like a brick. They are so solid, but I have nothing. I have nothing. I had ordered some 2.2. Uh, La Faina makes 2.2 dual stages. Their inner is very soft. Uh, yeah, it's... There's, there's just no chance. So uh, we'll figure something out if need be, if the compliance is as bad as I think it might be. But we gotta, we gotta run with what they brung because it's the only foam I have remotely big enough. These are enormous. What, what did I, what did I measure them out at? Are they bigger or smaller? Yeah, they are 140 millimeters tall and 50 millimeters wide. So they fully fill that tire out. And let me tell you, mounting them on these, these are what I regard to be the easiest to mount wheels that you can use because you can see everything. Oh, yeah. Well, before we cram that in there, we got to do the. Yeah, it is. It is J Concepts Green. It is soft, it is sticky. No ribbing, no belting, no nothing. It honestly, like sidewall wise, it feels a hair thicker than a 1.9. These are not, these are not heavy. Uh, for frame of reference, let's grab a, 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 a mounted one. Here's a mounted one, right, this guy. That's 227 grams. That's not bad, like this, this, it's light for a 2.2, but it's not bad. Uh, this right here, just the tire and foam, this is 247 grams. So that gives you an idea how heavy these are. That's why I had gone to these wheels, 
because the combos were so heavy. We were well up past 350 grams per corner, which is pretty heavy. But now I feel like I'm in a position where I've got to start over again, and I've got to find some wide 2.2s with like 40 millimeter rings in them because these tires, and I held them up against a 2.2 rupture. I've mentioned before, the rupture is donut-like. It, it's very rounded over at the top. These are not rounded over at all. These are, these are square. These are absolutely squared off in profile. I gotta, I have to do everything in my power to mount this one correctly as it's the fourth one. Like I said, the, the hole in the center is so small that you can barely get the ring in it. And the rings in these are narrow. I, if I remember correctly, I have one loose. I do. The rings in these are 20, right at 20, 23 and a half. Call it 23 and a half? Yeah, 23 and a half millimeters wide, which is pretty narrow for a 60 millimeter wide tire. But when I attempted to mount this on Misdirection's standard width Amazon variety 2.2, I literally couldn't get it to go because I will show you again. Uh, see the, the foam coming up right there? You got to use two. Okay. Ordinarily, to mount these wheels on a 2.2, they just fall onto the wheel. But not these. These are nightmarish. The only way I have successfully gotten the three to mount, and it was not. It was not fun. It was an absolute struggle. All the foam wants to do is push up over the edge because the hole is so small and the foam is so hard. So we have to push the inner ring all the way out to one side. And I mean all the way out. If you leave any little bit of foam over, it will, it will pop the bead out. So then we... We set the face in, and as I said, these are the easiest. I don't know how well it'll look down the barrel there, but you can see the lip all the way around. Good little reflection there. So, so we've got it hooked. So now, because the back ring is just, it's literally just a ring. So we get that guy into place. I hated that I have to do this on camera, you know, for the whole continuity of it. I do it with every wheel. These are a nightmare. Right, right there. Come on, focus, 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 focus. Focus. There we go. That squish out? Well, I think what has happened is this, this side of the ring has already dried out. Yeah, without the bubble juice, it's almost impossible because little bits of the lip will fold over, well, fold under, and then you, you just can't get the thing. It, it won't, it will not seat. So what I do is I try to get just one part seated, and I've lost my, I had a little, I had a little tool that I was using to help me here. So I just get this pushed down as best as I can, and then I just, this is an old, I think it's a Traxxas turnbuckle tool. No, it's for Traxxas drive shafts, that's what it's for. And I just kind of tuck the foam under in the hopes that we can get the lip, the mounting lip, to come up over the edge. And honestly, it is really like poking a, a sofa cushion or a, a shoe insole is what it feels like. When I feel like I've got it, we'll, we'll get one screw started. Okay. And then I'll, I'll check it around. And the lip fully punched over to the other side. So the, li the lip's not in at all. So we start over. It probably took, well, I mean, you can see here. It's just nothing but foam. It's just a line of foam. It probably took 15 minutes per wheel. 
and it has nothing to do with the wheel or the tire and everything to do with this grotesquely oversized insert. I don't understand this insert at all on any other sort of a quick view. I would, I would just, I would just replace the insert quick view or junk view, but I don't have that option. I don't have anything remotely large enough to fill these. So y'all know me, man. I love me a J concepts tire. I do not love these foams. Uh, usually by the fourth one, I got, I've got it down. Uh, even tough to mount stuff, unless it's stuff that proves to be like nearly impossible to mount. Like there's no, there's no lip in the tire, but these are easy enough to mount the tire. But that insert is so catastrophically enormous that the way I end up having to do with this, uh, this would be better if it was wood, if you had a little wood tool. I get it up on here and I just push the lip under to make sure that it's in the ring. And I know, I can, I can, I can go back and check it and you can see in there, you can see the lip all the way around. That's, that's not something you can do with a regular beadlock. I think with a regular beadlock, you'd have to be like at least a 40 or a 45 millimeter wide beadlock ring to get these to actually cooperate. And they feel, yeah, pretty, pretty dead, but they feel, they feel so hard. I'm used to a softer insert. Now these tires are very soft. Uh, I grunt a little, but this rig is not particularly heavy. It is not, okay, I should, I, I'll, I'll withdraw that. Particular, that's, I don't think that's the term we we're looking for. I don't think that's 100% accurate. This rig is not heavy for how enormous it is. So relatively speaking, this rig is not that heavy. I mean, in terms of other things, sure. And, you know, uh, your stock, your, your stock 10-2 honcho. Yeah, this is like two of those. But it also has a, nearly a 16-inch wheelbase. It's around a foot wide. It's the, it's the size of thing that we put to work here to use a 150 millimeter tall tire. I can't get, there we are. I'm, I am I am in the weeds today, folks. I am fighting. So, I love a Tusk. I have said that it is my favorite 1.9 tire. And I am now, of course, deeply concerned because I think this tire should have all the capabilities and capacities of a Tusk, but... We have to temper that with, like, if not the stiffest, in the top three stiffest foams that I've ever encountered. Like, unbelievably stiff. They did me dirty again at J Concepts. Ordinarily, when you open up a pair of tires, like, you'll see, uh, how, how do I position this? Okay, there we go. Green dot. Green dot. Green, green dot. It's right, it's right there, if it would focus. Uh, green dot. And then we got one with the green dot to the outside. Because uh, they're just, they're not, and, and that's Chevron forward, 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 forward. There was, there was no other way to do it. So we got three out of four with green dot forward. And uh, usually I go into kind of like a lazy autopilot mode where I go, oh, well, the green dots. We just face the green dots in. And I would have gotten one tire wrong. So, there's nothing to do. Yeah, that's four beats. Oh. I can hear how sticky they are. They are sticking to the bench. And that is to take these out 
and take them through the Canyon Tire Test Protocol, which is what we are going to do. And we're going to see how these do. They, I mean, if we're going off of sitting on the bench, and I'm sure the thumbnail, which hasn't been taken yet, I'm sure the thumbnail will be even better. Those look amazing. Those look absolutely perfect. And you know what's weird? Maybe they do know. Why would we assume that they wouldn't? Like, that shoulder feels fan that feels superb. I had initially thought, oh, well, I have a bunch of uh, Traxxas Canyon Trail 2.2s, which have a delightful two-stage in them. I could throw those in there. Uh, no. No, no, no. Let me grab one down. 2.2 uh, Canyon Trail. These make 2.2 Canyon Trails look like 1.9s. These are humongous. These are... These are the biggest tires in the canyon now by a good piece. Like you see, same, right about the same height as a sticky, but the sticky has got to be 10 millimeters narrower. These are, these are beefy. And uh, I have tempered high hopes because I love a tusk. That's a really firm phone. We will go crazy if we do nothing but sit in here and speculate. So instead of sitting in here and speculating, let one, two, three, so uh, Robo Kitty and, and, and Yarn Bear and me, that's three, and I'll, we'll call the Royal U, so four. The four of us will head out there now and see what we can do. I remain, as ever, cautiously optimistic, as, like, they're, it's J Concepts Green. Like, they're sticky, they're flinging stuff all over the place. The compound is super soft, supple, tacky. Uh, but that foam, eh, well, I mean, there's only really one way to find out. Like, you know, I don't want to see any slip. And, and, okay, all right, okay. So, the amount of slip that we saw there, I would consider mm -hmm, acceptable, because that is a brand new foam that has not touched rock. These will break in some. Yeah, the, the, the it's a tusk. So it grips like crazy, but you hear that lug noise? Yeah, there's a ton of drive in these tires. There is a ton of drive in these tires. As, as we would expect. I, I would expect nothing different. Little skate there in the front. Gotta remember they're pretty firm. Gonna have to use a little four wheel steer here to get this big long gal around. We don't, we don't care much about the uh, Tonka truck. If, if she doesn't make it, she'll just, she'll just run him over. Now, with this, I had, I had wondered. This, this is tangential. This is related, but unrelated. I had wondered with this, like, do I want a super soft insert for this? Or do I want a more firm insert for this? Because when the weight transfers on this one, it tends to really transfer. Oh, that was excellent right up until we kind of ran out of traction. Yeah, much sharper cut there. Yeah, they feel crazy responsive, way more responsive than I thought that they would be on that foam. So we're, we're, feeling, we're feeling a little better so far, a little. We'll see if it improves above this. Have advantages and disadvantages here at Daphne's. Uh, big, very tall tires. Angle it around. Four wheel steer. Now, now I needed to turn that rear end a little earlier. Yeah, it's going to slide and glide that front end. Okay. Give it more of a straight. Yeah, very, very pushy. Now, the rift axle, not a ton of steering. You gotta use four-wheel steer to bring some of that back. Some people can get away with not four-wheel steering their rift. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't drive it. There we go. Yeah, it's a very different angle of attack for the lines with the tusks versus the stickies. Because the stickies is what I remember. There's a, there's a bit more, uh, I get what, what I would call lug slip. We're getting a bit of lug pop here. And I have to think that that's insert. 
Let them. Yeah, there's still there's still a lot of power in there. Yeah, there's a there's a definitive curve here. Yeah, right there. What I'm not noticing, thankfully, is the loss of unsprung weight. Like these are much lighter, but they don't they don't act super light, which oh uh, thank goodness for that. We'll come down the back side here and we'll head over to the notch, which you know. Compound's gonna get us quite a ways. Oh, okay. Yeah, prove me wrong. It's fine. I don't care. All of that lug noise is insert. I I don't like they they work far better than I would have anticipated. But I don't I don't know what I don't know what these are for. Like Unless you're putting these inserts on like a sixth scale, they're too heavy. Move out here onto the side hill where unless I mess up and apply too much rear steer or try to take this too blisteringly fast, this is a situation where Robo Kitty has never really had an issue. And here is a tire that it just has grip slip brought about by the heaviness of the insert, but look at perfect positioning. When the nose pushes in, the tail drops down. Uh, she's too long to like cantilever over. So just, just an easy pass there. That tire with that insert, and I'm like I say, I'm not a huge fan of the insert, but that insert in that situation was, was nearly perfect. Like just the right amount of slide, a little bit more positioning. Sometimes a tire, particularly on a rig with four wheel steer, sometimes you'll get a tire that grips too much. Not every tire is set a, is out for uh, four wheel steer. And I don't think we've tested tusks on four wheel steer yet. Well, I mean, we have now. A little offline from where we would ordinarily be sitting here. Uh, Robo Kitty has uh, been the one, one of only a few that will, that can take this just in a straight pull. And it's done it on the stickies. Can we still do it on the tusk? I, I would call this the shuttle move, honestly. There's, there's no, like, it's helping us and hurting us in equal measure, the, the insert. It's so firm. I do, like right here, it, we look hopeless. But look at that, look at the traction hop. Oh, there it goes. Okay, here's an instance. Here's an instance. I think with dozens and dozens of hours put into these foams, I'm thinking they would start to break in. And by not starting overly soft, they're kind of built for it. Like that traction hop right there. Oh, and see, you just stay constant throttle and it'll go. We're gonna take another pass at that because yeah, it's, it's getting noticeably better in five minutes of wheeling, which is, so I, I, I maybe I'm too quick to, to prejudge. We need to go, because we're supposed to be testing a bump right here. Some tires can make this without the bump, but can we make this without the bump, without a big shuttle move? It's right there. Oh, I'm that that was me. Look at that rear axle. I'm like, why why are we why are we shooting so far over to one side? Well, because you probably just shouldn't mess with that knob. Yeah, there's there's no compliance from the foam, but at the same time, there's there's no compliance from the foam. It's it is helping in some instances. It helped on the side hill. It helps with some of the, like getting into bad positions here. I gave way too much zazz, too many beans before. It will almost hold it. Uh, like, I feel like I'm not getting a fully accurate picture of what the tusk can even do because I feel, I feel like I'm driving the inserts. That, that slide off right there was the, the fronts having no 
no sidewall compliance. So they act like, they act, honestly, the foam is so firm, it acts like the inner, like the inner blue of a dual stage. But imagine just the whole foam being made out of that. It's amazing what these tires are doing with how rock hard that insert is. This particular pair of lines to attack are two that are uh, not well suited to defeating uh, the big girl here. Go this way. Got the belly hung a little bit. That skid is pretty wide. I spoke too soon. It's defeating me utterly. I've left in too much four wheel steer. Can I make that? Nobody makes that. Nobody takes the straight, well, I mean, this works out better for all of us. Nobody takes that straight hit there over that slab, the one that they just made, because it, it's too far to break over. And the specialty of this uh, rig is not break over. She's super long, but she also has a lot of forward drive and 2.2 tusks. So get that rear straightened out. There we go. Just, just wa watch the watch the compliance, and remember when I pushed down on those, you saw how unbelievably firm the foams are. But the suspension, for those unfamiliar, uh, stock rift shocks with uh, Traxxas long arm springs on them. They just happen to work. They work great, as a matter of fact. You see that arm coming over, what's this way, and then counter back. Yeah. You you put it, you, you aim it, and it goes. That that's, that's what she does. And this tire is packed with confidence. I almost uttered the phrase, let's, let's see how this thing is gonna bump. And then I said, oh, well, we know how it's gonna bump. There's that overly firm foam right there. We can just park it and roll it. Yeah. I, I thought we were gonna get quite a bit of donkey out of this one because they're just... They are king donkey. I, I, I mean, I guess, I guess the solution to this is just wheel it and wheel it and wheel it and wheel it and break those foams down because I'm running through my head like, what can I do to build an insert for that? These are enormous. Uh, does anybody out there, I mean, uh, would I be willing to throw the money at it? Does anybody out there make an insert specifically for the 2-2 the two -two tusk, which is a big, big boy? I run my 2-2 two -two ruptures on just the stock foams. They're, they're fine. Yeah, even with that, even with that foam, there's, you get the right wheel speed and you get the right wheel line. You get that front, you get that inside front turned in right where you want it. It's just gonna go and you back off of any obstacle. This is this compliance of the suspension working. Let's try the opposite side. It's just so wide. She, she breaches all obstacles. Little, uh, Little crab claw uh, climb there. Not many people, not many rigs could hit that could hit that particular angle there. She picks a spot and she goes to that spot. Okay, let's try a really bad entry here. Kind of pivoting on the belly. I was just straight over. That was that was rear steer only to get over that. The tusk in its big size proves to be every bit as capable as its smaller form. Oh, not the dead limit sign. Get that rear axle straightened out. I have this problem where I don't straighten out my rear axle. And what do we expect on uh, transfer from materials? Well, these tires are big. This rig is long. Uh, if the front tires can find purchase, they're going to pull up off of the dirt. Uh, the dirt is even more blown out than usual. Let's 
try some four wheel steel. Little, little, little four wheel. Little crab. Gotta get that belly off of there. Like I say, breakover is not a strength here. Uh, it's a long way in between tires, width-wise and length-wise. And there we go. But with her lineage, with her with her birth nature as a bouncer, there's a bit to the geometry that's really responsive to getting thrashed around. So we still manage it. But I mean, I can pick the line and just drive to it. Do I feel like I need more weight in the corners? No, I do not. I do not. That is that is the 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 really surprising takeaway from me here. Uh, when they were at like 350 plus, I could feel the weight of them, a real pendulum action on the end of the axle. Uh, these at two, oh, what was it, 227 complete with the wheel. That's right about where we want to be. I mean, d would I like to bolt on a little bit of weight if just to get to the kilo of wheelos? Because we're at what, 454, 908? Yeah, you know I want to bolt 192 grams on there. You know I do. Uh, ooh, I might be able to do that. I might have the, the, I might have the substance. Hmm, hmm, interesting. Oh, yeah, right. What were we at? Tire testing? Right, we're tire testing. So despite the fact that uh, Robo Kitty is a fair weather gal. That was so much better. So much better. Uh, yeah, I, I think just thrash, thrash those foams around. Yeah. I mean, could anyone try to stay? Let's try low, low and slow over the bean here. There's a little hesitation there. Got to get out of that little notch. She just doesn't like this angle. Once we get into that spot, it's just, there's either traction hop or there's pull. And that's, that has to, I, I have to say that has to be the insert. There's nothing else. But uh, uh, to complete the previous thought, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it, right? We're out here to be out here. This is now officially part of the tire test protocol. And I'm, uh, yeah. Well, I think I got her, uh, I think I got her front tire a little bit on that on that pass there yeah i definitely did so we, we got a double wet on the passenger front oh yeah that's what i like to see takes a little of the hop out let's get over to the side of the beam let's get around there we go yeah the tusk like many other soft compound tires uh some like it wet I was trying to think of like a some like a hot joke. They sweat when the heat is on. But uh, yeah, I feel no difference whatsoever. If anything, it's like the surface is cleaned off a little bit and, and we're getting a little bit more drive. Also, getting on the wet is cleaning the compound off on the tires. So if you're driving on damp, th these are going to do better. We can, we can get some throttle in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. So, again, as, as we're now, <laughs> do that again. As we're now making some sort of half approximation at science by, uh, on occasion, an ant bit me on the toe. Uh, uh, writing things down, so that's semi-scientific. I would put the 2-2 two -two tusk, like you, you've heard me, 1-9 tusk on its bad day is a 93, and on a good day is a 97-98. As, oh yeah, something. I got a big welt growing on the back of my toe. An ant got underneath the strap of my flip-flop. Should have just come out barefooted instead of got bit by an ant. These things happen. Uh, 97, 98 on a good day. I would give this tire on the included insert a 94. 
So changing to another insert is going to give you this, this, that, that last 5%, as you know, um, in anything, in any pursuit in life. Well, how is the, how does the phrasing go? Uh, the last 10% of something takes 90% of the time. 10% of the time is the first 90%. I, I, I have found that to be true. And in the case of these tires, I think we can take it even one step higher that getting that last 5% to get to like a 99 as d full disclosure, I don't think my scale has a 100 on it. I can't imagine a tire that is a 100. It's going to not do something well. There's no, there's no multi-tool that can perform all of the functions. So to get this tire from the 94 that I think it sits at now, I mean, is it warm today? Look how, look how fast this is drying out. Uh, to get this from a 94 to a theoretical 99, I don't, I don't know what need be done. Does it need 3D printed? Does it need some custom confabulated Canyon custom insert, which I've been thinking about pretty much nonstop since we got out here of like, how am I going to do this? Go away. Go away. Wasps. Just wasps. You know, like they're just, they're just checking me out. So I don't know what it's going to take to get those last five points. I definitely want to get them. As far as I'm concerned, these are the tires. Robo Kitty will be fitted with 2.2 tusks from here into perpetuity. I can't imagine anything better. These are fantastic. It will be what's inside the tire that we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Some, we'll, we'll figure something out. So I don't think uh, this, this is an, uh, in, on one, on the one hand, this is kind of an odd quick view because there were no surprises. I thought that the only thing that was going to hold these back would be the foams, and I feel like I was correct in that. If we want to go to a half surprise, it's that the foams didn't hold them back as much as I thought they would. They are impossibly, improbably hard. So this might, okay, erase all that. This could be precedent setting because if we could get this level of performance out of these tires, which are fantastic tires, out of what on the bench felt like a terrible foam, a foam that I would ordinarily cast aside, but we had to run because of the size of the tire. Uh, what does this say for junk view tires? I think it says they're pretty much going to get have to test. They're going to have to get it tested on the foams that they come with, regardless of what it feels like. Fair shakes, right? I mean, I was trying to give the benefit of the doubt, but why? Like, you know, uh, no, no special treatment for $14 tires. If, I mean, these, these aren't cheap. If there was no special treatment for those, uh, oh, we can't pedal out special treatment for cheap stuff from AliExpress. So there's the big takeaway. This tire is a 94. Uh, everybody just gets the foams they came with now and will adjust accordingly after. Yeah, there it is. I think I ran out of stuff to say about this tire. I think it did really well. I'm happy with it. I love the way it looks. I usually do the thumbnail last, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to put away the bucket chair. I'm going to itch my toe some more. Oh, that's a it, it is a it is a genuine bump we got growing. Uh and then I'm going to shoot that thumbnail and then uh, I'll see you guys next time. So, in the spirit of the Midwest goodbye, how we typically end these uh, I do invite you to comment below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Likes and subscriptions are absolutely free. They don't cost you anything more than a click of the mouse. Uh, channel memberships uh, uh, cost a mere pittance compared to what everything else costs these days. Uh, if you are not a member, please do consider becoming one. It helps the channel grow. It helps us buy stuff to do stuff and make more content for you so that you'll know whether or not you need to buy it. If you are already a member, I thank you so very much. Your contributions are greatly appreciated. Are you back? Go away. No. Oh, now he brought a friend. Is your net? Oh no, their nest is under the bench that I'm sitting next to. Okay. Yeah, I should go. Uh, I'm sitting.
how long is my arm? Three feet from a wasp's nest? That, that's a big thumbs up, good buddy. Uh, I will see you next time. In between now and when we meet again, and please one and all do your very best to have a good run, everybody. I'm looking hard uh, left here at the wasp nest. Uh, Robo Kitty and I will head back inside. It's it's not that hot, but it's hot. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those, right? Okay. Uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one. Uh, be good. Use soap, uh, etc. Y'all come back right here. Uh, yeah, that's it. I I I I tried to close it out. I couldn't. Ye no, no. Okay, yeah, I gotta go, I gotta go. I, I gotta let you go. I'll see you next time.